How's she going, eh? Welcome back to the channel. So this is part one in a new series of videos where we explore the viability of running a lawn tractor on ethanol. I am going to start the process of converting my Poolan Pro to run on ethanol fuel. In this particular video, we're going to focus on the carburetor. Carburetors are not something I have a lot of experience with. I've changed some. I've you know, clean symbols out, but I, I didn't quite fully understand the principles by which they work or the parts contained within. So in this video we're going to dive into that. Stick around. If you like the content, like and subscribe. Ring that bell. See you in the video. I'm going to go ahead and pop this carburetor off. And then I'm going to do some research and see what I can figure out about this thing. Like I said, I'm not great with carburetors. I'd like to sort of figure my way through that first before I go jumping and doing anything crazy. So, step by step. And then, once I can figure out how to jet this up, I'd like to try putting ethanol in it. It's in cars when you run ethanol. You just, you can advance the timing further and make more power. and. I'm not saying you can do that with a lawnmower engine. I'm just saying it should cool down the charger. So that would be a cool first step if you were gonna actually turbocharge the engine. Okay. So in order to make the tractor powered by E85 or some mixture of E85 and regular fuel, I had to learn about carburetors. So I'll tell you what I've, I guess, learned so far. I think, and again, this is a discussion. I'm engaging in learning. I am not here to try and teach anybody about carburetors. I'm here to learn about them myself in furtherance to my projects I have in mind. Carburetors are something I need to know about. So, this guy, as far as I know, is the fuel shutoff solenoid. If you get up off the seat, it activates the solenoid and closes the fuel off. So I'm assuming that's its normal state with no power right there, and that's its state. It gets pushed down or, or pulled down by a magnet when it receives 12 volts. There's the bowl. Okay, and this goes into here, and you can see the, I believe, the jet down there, the main jet, so I can pull that out. If something I say is incorrect, like I said, please let me know in the comments. I can't learn if I'm not corrected. And I'm not the kind of person who has trouble with learning. It doesn't bother me to be wrong. Um, I'm not the governor. There's that. That's the main jet. So this thing here, when it gets a it's just going to normally sit like this, shutting off the fuel. So, and the fuel fills the bowl and then goes through this hole and through that main jet. Um, and then down in here there's also a tube, and I don't remember what the name of this tube is, or its exact purpose. I'd be lying if I told you I did so maybe somebody in the comments can remind me what this thing is called there's your float oh, the stuff looks pretty good which is good clearly the the uh, varnish from the ethanol gas that everybody claims is the worst thing in the world isn't causing much of an issue maybe that's because with this emissions control stuff they've made the materials more resilient in my idiocy I thought maybe there was something under this hole right here so what did I do I drilled a hole in it and discovered that no it's just a passageway that runs over I believe to right there so I had ruined my carburetor so I thought but I happened to have some aluminum round stock and I cut it off and ran it in a drill on some sandpaper and beveled the edge and then put some green Loctite around the edge and made sure it didn't dump into the holes at all. I used a tiny amount of it. And then I tapped that plug back in there. And it seems to be working, so... That's good. So, if you ever do something idiotic like that, it can be fixed, apparently. And I got pretty lucky. I mean, I did it pretty ghetto with a drill and it worked out pretty good, so... 
This would be your choke. This is your throttle. I cannot seem to find this main jet, like these main jets. Like, I don't know if you're not allowed to rejet these carburetors or if they just make it really difficult or what the deal is, but this thing doesn't have a number on it anywhere from what I can see. And that bevel inside of there has to, must be a very specific grind because this thing's got to fit inside it to shut the fuel off. So continuing on, this is your low speed and it goes into this cavity. In fact, it's this hole. See how you can see this little groove that's running along right here? Then it goes into there, that part that I drilled off yesterday. That apparently is called a freeze plug, and you can buy those. So I could have replaced it with a proper one instead of making it myself, but anyway, mine worked. Behind there, there's all these holes that are super hard to see. Let's see if I can even see them. Yeah, you can kind of see them. There we go. See them in the light. I'm pretty sure that's your low speed. So instead of having like a, a jet, you just have, well, that's your jet, but it's built right into the body. You got this for when the throttle's completely shut. And a couple more as the throttle opens a bit more. When you get to that point right there, you're going to be pulling fuel through the main jet. A lot of what I learned is that these newer carbs are not really adjustable in any significant way. I'm sure it can still be done. Needle and seat, I believe. This thing, rubber tipped. This is your seat. Fuel comes in and if that bowl is up, it's pushing the seat into there. And there's no, you're not gonna get any fuel coming in. We'll see what's under here. Just looks like a bunch of drilled passages. So fuel comes in here, fills the bowl, goes through the auto shutoff, comes out through the center, through that silver jet. This is the idle jet. So it's got a hole, another hole, another hole. Number 54. You know, this was just basically a learning experience about trying to figure out how carburetor works. And I'm still not entirely sure I understand it, but I think I, like, I'm starting to understand what the passages do more and more. Okay, so, turns out these new fancy carbs don't use screws to adjust a lot of the stuff. Uh, I showed when I was pulling apart the carburetor some of the things I've discovered about what parts are which, you know, what this is, the fuel shut off, the main jet that runs through the center, the emulsion tube that allows the gas and air to mix together and then come up through the main orifice to prevent big blobs of fuel coming out. This is your pilot jet, they call it. I believe this is air that runs, or vacuum runs through here, through here and into the carburetor bowl. This, this is a lawn tractor, it runs wide open all the time, so putting ethanol in this thing hopefully won't be as difficult as I thought. Alright guys, so there it is. Part one. Me learning about carburetors. <clears throat> now that I have a little better understanding, I know where to go from here. So in the next video, I'm going to come up with a way to monitor the air fuel ratio so that we can definitively know if we're headed the right direction when we start um, adjusting the carburetor, drilling out the main jets. So hopefully you'll be around for part two. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Talk to you later, buddy.